Atheist Nomads, episode 138, news for March 17, 2016. The podcast you're about to listen to includes cursing and talking about hoo-hahs. Please be advised. We are the Atheist Nomads, bringing you history, science, politics, religion, and interviews with leaders in the atheist community. Not all those who wander are lost. Man, do you say that every show? <laughs> no, no, it's all pre-recorded. Oh. Yeah. I swear it's a little different every time. No. Nope. I'm just not fucking listening anymore. I don't yeah, know. You, you just aren't <laughs> listening, yeah. Uh, anyway, right. welcome to another episode of Atheist Nomads. I am Dustin. Joining me as always is Wesley. Hello, everybody. And Lauren is watching Mystery Science Theater and drawing nice yeah yeah so we're doing a little bit shorter of an episode and that's because uh, we just released one two days ago with the uh special uh half hour interview with uh connor uh robinson, robinson from the human service corps uh please if, please give him money if i break the fourth wall just for a second we actually just finished recording with him like 15 minutes ago yes uh, amazing guy yes and definitely, uh, worth, definitely worth your time five minutes after we get done recording this i will be editing his uh the interview with him and getting it up tonight nice so. be like a little 0. 0.5 episode yep yep so anyway um yeah i've got the link in the show notes for this episode as well um if you do want to go learn more about what they're doing and uh give money to um help get their their partner uh some permanent funding help women in a very poor part of Africa yeah. not be not be tortured and kicked out of their homes for because of being bullshit. called witches yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's an example a, a very literal example of religion causing and superstition causing direct physical harm uh, this is something that Dale McGowan's been working on for a long time with Foundation Beyond Belief. Mm -hmm. And yeah, th we're finally seeing some of these plans that he was talking about ages ago come to fruition. So this is so badass. Help these people out. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, I also do want to again uh, thank the uh, the people who donated to uh, help buy me some new uh, equipment. It's all up. I posted a link to the video on the uh, that I did of the, the new setup on uh, the Facebook page. I'll also include a link on the show notes for this episode. It is oh, it's it's nice. This interface is very clean. Um, I'm getting away with lower latencies and higher um, sample rates. And we did record an interview that's going up next week. A few days ago with Mikey Pullman <laughs> here in studio. So we've already used it. Um, it was it was pretty crazy. And Wesley's making really weird faces. Totally not cheesing for the camera. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yeah. thank you. Thank you all very much. And since we are down uh, doing a shorter episode because of the the partial we just put up. Um, we're going to skip, uh, dusting off the degree <coughs> and move into a short this day in history. Oh, so no. let's take a quick break and then we'll be right back. The Nomads is proudly brought to you by Archway Hosting. Check out their low price, full featured hosting solutions at archwayhosting.com. That's A-R-C-H-W-A-Y hosting.com. Hey, we're also brought to you by listeners just like you find out how you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash atheist nomads that's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash atheist nomads this day in history march 17th starting in the year of our lord yeah get that mm -hmm. mm. all right the year of our lord 461 <clears throat> so take this with a grain of salt because you know it's for fucking ever ago yes uh saint patrick dies yeah so you know the reason that everybody dresses up in green and you know drinks green beer that tastes like shit uh 
yeah, it all kind of traces back to this really old guy that wrote a book. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, St. Patrick, uh, he wrote this book called The Confessio uh, of Patrick, essentially. And in it, he kind of tells his life story. Uh, when This is kind of interesting. I really, it, they should make a movie. I'm just saying. Uh, when he was about 16, he was captured by Irish pirates from his home in Great Britain, and he was taken as a slave to Ireland. Uh, <laughs> so he became a <clears throat> look. He he looked after animals and became a shepherd essentially for them for uh, quite a few years, like six years. And he had a dream where he heard a voice and he was told to escape. And you know he did. He he made it back and. His family welcomed him back and, you know, hooray. Then, you know, <laughs> a little while later, he hears this other voice and, you know, he found, finds religion and, you know, becomes a, you know, joins a church and <clears throat> takes his orders and lives uh, very poorly, hmm. I suppose you might say. Like, you know, most, most people in the Catholic church, they always, you know, live you know off of just like a little heel of bread and a little bit of water so uh yeah he studied for the priesthood got in uh became a bishop and yeah <laughs> he actually went back to ireland and turned out that he helped convert supposedly thousands of irish people and hmm. yeah <laughs> i don't know if that's a good thing or bad but so it's all his fault <laughs> that the that the Irish got Catholicism, yeah, like it, half of them. It would have happened anyway. Yeah, but uh, <clears throat> you might hear, you might remember like little stories about him driving the snakes out of Ireland, or uh, supposedly using a shamrock or, or a three leaf clover, really, uh, to describe the Holy Trinity somehow. Uh, I'll let you look that up because fuck it, mm -hmm. I'm not. <laughs> uh, sure, three parts, great. Okay. Man, oh man. Anyways, uh, St. Patrick's Day, you know, <clears throat> got to be a, a really big thing, especially in the U. So St. Patrick's Day got to be a really big thing, uh, starting with uh, parades. Like in the U.S., uh, Irish soldiers, you know, they served in the English military, marched through New York City in 1762. Um, <clears throat> and it's been pretty damn popular here ever since. Uh, the Irish actually tried to help endorse it, the Irish government, back in 1995. Hmm. They've been trying to keep it going and, you know, drive tourism and other things to their country. So, you know. March might be a good time to visit Ireland if you like all that, you know, touristy shit. Yeah, because from what I understand, uh, the Irish don't actually really celebrate St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> Except for, you know, they're happy to uh, help Americans do it. Well, they're happy to help Americans spend their money, so fuck it. <laughs> so, moving on along to the year 1966. This is the day that the cute little elven deep sea submersible... Uh, pulls a United States hydrogen bomb off of the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea off the coast of Spain. So, yeah, um, this is just kind of a weird one. What can I say? Uh, just because we, you know, throw our bombs around and why are planes flying with fucking, <sighs> you know, fucking nuclear bombs for well, tests? For, and, oh, and, Around that Drills. time, we started the whole keeping B-52s loaded with nuclear weapons in the air at all times. Yeah. Still, Something that uh, wasn't ended until the Clinton administration. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> so here's the thing. Uh, it was back same year, uh, 1966 on 17th of January, uh, the Pelomares B-52 and a uh, KC-135 uh, fuel tanker uh, collided in midair. Mm. Yeah, so um, the fuel tanker, all four passengers, the pilot and passengers died on there. Um, thing with the B-52 
52 though is um when they got destroyed yeah um one of the hydrogen bombs fell into the mediterranean um uh, <clears throat> and uh Another was uh, recovered, I guess, safely on land, but two of them actually had a non-nuclear explosion, which, well, kind of uh, dirty bombed about a two-kilometer area in Spain. Oh. Yeah. So, basically, they got uh, plutonium thrown around because of this this explosion, so fucking duck. Damn. (laughs) Damn. Yeah, so uh, flying with nukes, not always a good idea. Just putting that out there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also had this really cute little side note that I, I saw when I was looking into the Elven, that uh, on the 6th of July, 1967, the Elven was actually attacked by a swordfish during a, a dive. Uh, the swordfish... <laughs> got trapped in the elven skin and the elven was forced to make an emergency surface. The attack took place at about 2000 feet uh, below the surface. Interestingly enough, the fish was recovered at the surface and cooked for dinner. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. That is awesome. It made me chuckle. Anyways, that's pretty much really all I have. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with politics and religion. Yay. We love hearing from our listeners. You can email us at contact at atheistnomads.com, tweet us at atheistnomads, send us a message on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash atheistnomads, or better yet, call us and leave us a message at 541-203-0666. We might even play it on the show. You can also help us out by leaving us a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcast directory of choice. We're going to start off again with our state legislative update, because, well, state legislatures like to do crazy things this time of year. Yeah. Sorry, Idaho. Yeah, first one's Idaho, uh, starting close to home, since, you know, I do live three miles from the Capitol building. In that lovely state. Yes. uh, Idaho's latest bill to finally put an end to some of the faith healing exemptions in Idaho's children, uh, excuse me, Idaho's child welfare laws has again needlessly died at the hands of Senator Lee Holt, uh, Hyder. And yes, this is exactly what will continue to happen to the children of the followers of Christ and other faith healing cults in this state. Unfortunately, faith healing cults are flocking to this state as neighboring states start to ban faith healing yeah. for children. Fucking Oregon did it a while back. I'm, mm-hmm. and I'm sure that there's a lot of people moving from there over to Idaho, which the, is only going to strengthen the numbers there. Oh, yeah. The other, uh, because the followers of Christ, the, the worst group and best known group uh, because of Linda Martin, who previous guest on on the show Mm -hmm. uh she was uh, you know a former member of that that church and the other part of their their big population is in oregon city and so yeah they're migrating to idaho uh one of the the really shitty things with this particular group in particular um they have no problem with Cousins marrying cousins. First cousins? First cousins. Right. So it is not uncommon for cousins to start fooling around and getting knocked up in their teens and not having any access to health care, and then their children marry their cousins. And their family tree is more like a family twig. I was going to say, you know, that's what they get for playing doctor and not going to the real one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it sucks that this is going on right here in the Treasure Valley. Mm. So, Oklahoma Senate Bill 118 would have made the performance of an abortion first degree murder. Stupid. It should have heard. Uh huh. Yes. This was pushed by State Senator Joseph Silk. 
it passed committee in the state Senate. And fortunately, it was then stopped by the Republican leadership uh, who decided that it went too far. So it will not be allowed to be heard on the Senate floor. You know, seriously, though, I mean, as much as it pisses me off that that actually like was proposed and made it through committee, it's kind of funny when Republicans are like, nah, a portion bill goes too far. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Because, yeah, first degree murder. Mm hmm. Are you are you kidding? It would have completely banned the practice in the state, which would have meant women would have been just doing coat hanger abortions at home and dying, and getting charged for murder posthumously. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I mean, the, the, even if it went, even if this went through everything and got passed, it doesn't fucking matter. I mean, any. Anybody with a lick of sense in that state could have challenged it and won. Mm hmm. So I'm glad they finally pulled their heads out of their ass, but fuck, come on. Stop wasting them on time and money. Do your job. Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and move up to, to Iowa, mm. where they are considering a bill that would include gender identity and gender expression under the protected classes in the state's hate crime laws. Sure. This is awesome. Sure. Uh, This important bill has the backing of churches, law enforcement, and just about everyone, especially after the recent murder of a trans kid in an alley. Fuck. Yeah. So during the debate on this bill, state Senator Jake Chapman introduced an amendment that would make abortions also a hate crime. Right. Yeah. Um, Mm -hmm. This proposal was eventually ruled to not be germane to the bill, (laughs) but it still distracted the Senate from the goal of trying to save the lives of trans people. And he wanted to derail it to trying to save the lives of clusters of cells. Yeah, I mean that. That's how a lot of bullshit gets passed in the first place. Is people just tag stuff onto the end of it like that? So I'm really glad that somebody actually like, no, this just doesn't belong. It's not part of this. Get the fuck out. Well, the fact that it's actually on the Senate floor means that the amendment would have required a majority vote in favor of it to get tacked on. But just having it uh, labeled not germane to the debate in the first place, Mm -hmm. you know, kept it from getting that far. Yeah. Man, what the fuck? Come on. So, (laughs) I had Mm. Kentucky, and so far the first bill we've talked about that was sponsored by a Democrat. Mm. Uh, Senate Bill 278 was unanimously approved recently by the Senate Education Committee. And this bill would authorize the creation of a Bible literacy class for the state public schools. In other words, Bible class as an elective social studies course for public schools. I don't know. This one doesn't bother me too much as long as it's an elective and as long as it's not being taught as history. I mean, if, if it's a, just a, a reading or, or like, a, 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 lit, a study on literature, it won't be, Yeah, there'll be too many teachers that will teach it as fact. And it's just an excuse to proselytize in public schools. Sure. Sure. If, if you want to have a class on world history, that'd be awesome. Uh, if you want to do a biblical literacy class, it needs to not be specifically just Christian. Of course. Uh, having a class on the, on literacy, on the world's scriptures, that would be awesome. Cover the Bible and the Quran and the Bhagavad Gita and Tao Te Ching and (laughs) that would be awesome. Uh, yes, it would be. Other than that, the only place where it'd really be appropriate to have 
Bible literacy come up is when it's important for what you're talking about. So in history courses, when you reach a point where you're talking about something that's related to the Bible, which is almost always something bad that was happening, yes, it is worthwhile to bring up the religious texts that are, are related. That's fine. If you are doing a literature class where you're talking about books like the Red Badge of Courage and <laughs> other books that assume a knowledge of the Bible, uh, I would be okay with looking at the biblical passages that help inspire some of those parts of those books. Yeah. That's relevant Bible literacy. Just knowing the entire book, that's not something you need to focus an entire school course on. There are much better things to learn, like how the world works in reality. Science, math. Ah, god damn. <laughs> and this is coming from somebody who had Bible class in school. <laughs> All the way from when I started at Grants Pass 7th Avenue School in 7th grade, or, or excuse me, 3rd grade, all the way through to my senior year of high school at Milo. I had to have Bible class every single year. It is a giant waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. But come on, it teaches you about science and evolution. And uh, The only part <laughs> of it that was really cool was uh, senior year the last half of, of Bible 4 was comparative religions. Oh. We actually had to visit a religious service from a different religious group. And I went to the Russian Orthodox Church in Rogue River, Oregon. That was pretty cool. Still a variant of Christianity, though. We were in know. Southern Oregon. Everything there is a variant of Christianity. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. It's probably hard enough to find that one. Russian Orthodox was as far removed from Seventh-day Adventist as we could find. Hmm. And it wasn't right. hard to find. It's right on the freeway, and I'd driven by it thousands of times. So I was, I was very excited to finally get a look inside. Hmm. Okay. Beautiful building. Oh, and speaking of Oregon, the uh -oh. Oregon State Legislature has passed a bill that to add the words or affirmations after the word oath in a state law that governs testimony given before legislative that legislative committees and the whole legislature. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So this will make it so that the president of the Senate, speaker of the House, chairperson or vice chairperson, blah, blah, blah may administer oaths or affirmations to witness in any proceedings under their examination. As opposed to just administering oaths. And uh, the governor is expected to sign this if she hasn't already. And it will make it clear that not everyone has to say, so help me God. <laughs> so kudos, Oregon. And uh, yeah, Kate Brown, uh, Oregon's governor, also have to give her kudos, the first openly bisexual or LGBT of any kind governor, with the exception of Republican governors who got caught screwing guys while be, trying to be closet cases. Come on, they're not gay. Uh, the one from New Jersey actually came out as gay and divorced his wife and got together with his boyfriend what but he is resigned he, is he now a, a log cabin uh republican i i don't know uh so, but he, he resigned before he did any of that uh, okay. as soon as it was found out <laughs> uh, kate brown went into office uh, hmm. openly as a bisexual hmm. pretty good cool. yeah and uh we are, are done with the state legislatures but there is some fun stuff going on with the presidential campaigns. Oh, goodness. Uh, televangelist Rick Joyner went on to the Jim Baker show to say something that is quite 
fascinating. Uh, go ahead and listen. You look at the type of leaders that Jesus chose, they were more like Donald Trump's. Mm. The sea, the sea mm. people. I was thinking yeah. of a sea captain when we were talking about And think of how he treated them. This mm. salty you remember, sea language. We think of Jesus as just this big teddy bear. Mm -hmm. Think of this. These are some of the toughest guys you could find. Mm -hmm. He puts them together. They hate each other mm -hmm. when he calls them. Yeah, they spent... If you watch the, the larger clip from Right Wing Watch, uh, the whole segment of you know, several minutes is just talking about how awesome Donald Trump is and how Christians need to get behind him because he's like the disciples. Well, that, that's pretty sta standard. You know, they, somebody will say, oh, he's like this. And then they have to uh, pardon it, Trump him and say, yeah, he's like this. And then, yeah, you know, you go back and forth, back and forth. And of course, fucking Jesus at the end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Of course, uh, not everybody has that kind of opinion of Trump. Uh, Gary Cass of the Christian Anti-Defamation Commission, who previously made videos about how Obama isn't a Christian, Obviously. is now raising funds to make videos showing that Trump isn't one either. Mm. So either Trump is like Jesus' disciples... Or he's not a Christian. Holy hmm. shit. Um, who's the who's the chubby Mormon that's always on the radio? Glenn Beck? Yes. I thought Glenn Beck has a thing for Trump also. He hates him. He could. Hmm. This is the weird no. thing, in my opinion, is that conservative Christians like Trump. That is weird. Ted Cruz, I get. Trump, I don't. <laughs> okay, I gotta, I gotta read the entire article name. <clears throat> Glenn Beck. Trump is a pathological, narcissistic sociopath. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, Glenn Beck definitely doesn't like Trump. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so mm. let's let's go ahead and move to Ted Cruz. Oh goodness. Um, he's afraid of what will happen with one more liberal justice. As well, he should be. We are one liberal justice away from the Supreme Court ruling that government can take our religious liberty away and force every one of us to violate our faith on penalty of prison or fine. No, no. We are one liberal justice away from the Supreme Court ordering Ten Commandments monuments torn down all over this country. We are one liberal justice away from the Supreme Court erasing the Second Amendment from the Bill of Rights. We are one liberal justice away from the Supreme Court ordering veterans memorials torn down if they have any religious symbols torn down all over this country. And we are one liberal justice away. Oh, he, he just keeps going. What a bag of dicks. Come on. Ain't they nobody going to take those fucking war, war memorials down. No. Every okay. war memorial has some kind of religious symbol on it. That's fine. Yeah. When the entire memorial is a cross on public property, that's a little different. It doesn't contain a religious symbol. It is a religious symbol. And I'm sure that everybody would be happy to take those Ten Commandments monuments and move them over to the church or some private property. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Wouldn't it? Yeah, wouldn't that be great? Yeah. And the Supreme Court taking away religious, religious liberty, forcing people to violate their faith under penalty of jail? Not in our fucking lifetime. Uh, the only scenario where that happens is like with his buddy, uh, Kim Davis, 
can't. Who is a civil servant unwilling to do her job. Right. Do your gerb or get another one. Uh huh. That's, that's not forcing people to violate their religious freedom. That is telling people that if you're going to discriminate when you are the face of the government, you need to find a different job. Oh, man. And I don't know what's scarier, that Ted Cruz is Trump's biggest challenge <laughs> or that Donald Trump appears to be unstoppable. <sighs> man, you know what? I really held out hope. Hope against hope that Trump was trolling. Trump was trolling. I really hope that. But, you know, now that he's just basically letting all of his followers, you know, fuck people shit up and beat them up, literally. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, no, yeah, sorry. All, all that, that little ember of hope is gone now. He, he really is just a fucking big bag of dicks. Yep. With all a right. bad hair, get hair data. Moving along. Mm, yeah. Alec Nawani, Nidawani, the prophet of the Zion Christian Church in Pretoria, South Africa, was with church members touring Kruger National Park. Mm. Then he went into a trance, started speaking in tongues, and ran towards a, uh, a pride of lions. Like you do. He was in a, a safe car, and he opened the door and ran for the lions. Yeah. This is ridiculous. This so, is the Tuesday for me. What are you talking about? So then the lions started running back at him because, yeah. hey, lunch. And actually this, this article from Ghana Web uh, describes the, the lion's response as if it was manna from heaven. <laughs> and so when he saw the lions running towards him, he all of a sudden came to his senses, turned, and tried to get back to the cars. But before a, decision. before a park ranger was able to scare the lions away, one grabbed his ass, causing enough damage that he had to have surgery. Oh, yeah. Took some chunks out. This is great. <laughs> yeah. Like, the, the way it's described, the lion took the two paws and grabbed his ass yeah. and just clamped down. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, he, boy. He was asked later uh, after, you know, doctors had assured him that his ass would be intact. <laughs> uh, he asked, why did he do that? And he said that he, I, I don't know what came over me. I thought the Lord wanted to use me to show his power over animals. It is not, or is it not we were given dominion over all the creatures of the earth? Yeah, no, that lion had dominion over his ass. Uh -huh. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, and, oh, man. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if anything, didn't the fucking Bible and the Romans teach you anything? Christians and lions don't get along. Yeah. He must have been thinking about uh, Daniel, who, you know, prophets and lions get along, like, like Daniel. Mm -hmm. Well, by prophet, you mean uh, a person that says wise things, or do you mean money? Because I'm thinking in his case, it just means money. Uh, I'm thinking crazy person who managed to get people to pay him to yeah, spout money. Spot crazy things. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't mean crazy mm -hmm. in a pejorative way. Um, he, he needs to get access to, you know, proper psychological and medical care. Obviously it is tragic that he do, has not. Um, but yeah. He just thought he was going to show off. Come on. Yeah. I don't think he's crazy. Just dumb. <laughs> uh, uh, Deerfield Beach, Florida Mayor Gene Robb 
has been found by the state ethics committee to have misused her office. <laughs> there were five charges in total, two involving her pastor or church, such as giving her pastor a beach parking sticker that is reserved for city employees and having the city sweep up her church's parking lot after an event. <laughs> What's even better is these charges were brought by Chaz Stevens, the Satanist best known for his PBR Festivus poll. Oh, I didn't know he was a Satanist. And when he was asked about how he felt about this ruling, he said that he feels like he and Satan are vindicated. <laughs> I knew Chaz Stevens in, in his PBR Festivus poll, but I didn't know he was a Satanist. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> oh, boy. Get on you, boy. Yeah. And for our final news piece, Bangladesh was established in 1971 as a secular state. Mm -hmm. This was changed in 1988 when the constitution was amended, making Islam the official state religion. Now the Supreme Court is hearing arguments, excuse me, in a challenge to that status brought by leaders of religious minority groups. The article in the show notes does not provide really any more useful details than this. It rambles on with many words. And says little. Okay. But this is all the details about what's actually happening. They go on to talk about uh, bloggers getting massacred. Okay, that's mm -hmm. worthy to bring up, but yeah, they don't actually talk about the case any more than than this so cool if we're lucky bangladesh will be a uh, secular state in southeast asia that'd be that'd be pretty cool we need more of those once again mm -hmm. yeah bring that shit back yeah okay. and so we're gonna go ahead and move to feedback now uh first off we have a new itunes review holy shit somebody uses itunes yeah, from Preview92. These guys are true professionals. They are timely, topical, and knowledgeable. Further, their audio and production value goes above and beyond some dedicated studio audio. Nice. I highly encourage anyone that is looking for a podcast where the hosts put their all into something they truly love, look no further than the Atheist Nomads. All I'm going to say is we use video sometime, and I hate it because I can't pick my nose. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, seriously, uh, I'm just lounging on my couch, so if it sounds good, I'm really happy. Yeah, yeah. It, it, this is thanks to our, our supporters that we have uh, equipment to make us sound nice. Yes, I am a, a perfectionist, so I have tried to make sure that, that uh, our quality is good. I am also lazy, <laughs> so I have put a lot of work into figuring out how to do this with the least amount of work necessary. Well, that's not lazy. That's just smart. Ah, true. True. I, I like snuggling with my wife. Yeah. 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 Me too. My girlfriend. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, from, uh, Jason, that's at JCC Ford on Twitter. At Atheist Nomads, I wish God was real so I could fucking yell at him for being an asshole to children. For some context, I'm volunteering with the children of my city's Syrian refugees, and there is no fucking reason child should have to go through this. It makes me incredibly angry, and thanks for allowing me to rant slash vent. It was actually over, over a few twits, but... Yeah. It was three tweets. Twits. Nah. So, yeah, yes. fucking A. You're yeah. always welcome to uh, to rant to us, and we will sp often spread it on on the internet. Yep. So, dude, badass for you know working with the refugees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they need help. Um, from Peter via email, greetings from Germany. <clears throat> I think this is our second message from Germany. Mm -mm. Uh, first of all, I want to say I really love your show. Keep up the good work. I just listened to episode 136 where you mentioned the case of a German math teacher who was prosecuted because of allegedly blasphemous writings on his car. 
I have read up on this topic. The ruling is not yet legally valid, and he can still appeal the decision. The defendant stated in an interview that he sees this prosecution as a chance to determine if the paragraph in question is valid. He is prepared to get the case in front of the Bundy's Verwaltun Gosher shit. Rich, you nailed it. Which is nailed the court it. in Germany to decide if a law is within the Constitution. So, constitutional court in English, I think. So, the fine is 500 euros, is not final, and I hope that higher courts will rule differently. Best regards, Peter. P.S. I made a small donation so I can enjoy many more episodes and the lovely addition to your show, Lauren, who unfortunately is not here for this one. Yeah. Seriously, thank you very much. Yes, thank, thank you. you very much, Peter. And dude, send some send some pictures, please. <laughs> <laughs> I love seeing pictures of other countries and beer of anywhere, anywhere. This is Germany. Don't send pictures. Send beer. Uh, it send both, please. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. from at trip and fool on twitter this is in regard to the new uh equipment mm. congrats at Le atheist nomads looking forward to being able to hear more voices just gives us all the more to learn from Happy from travis via email this is the day the challenge went up on our last news episode, one episode 136, I may have been more excited than normal for an episode to come out. Just saying. Well, you might want to keep your excitement to yourself. Just saying. But thank you. <laughs> so anyway, we got donations for the Travis match from Randy, the atheist community of San Jose, who ooh, hosts ooh. speakers every other Wednesday and do a lot of volunteer work in the Bay Area. Sweet. Grant. Cassandra and Travis McGee. This came to a total of three hundred and thirty dollars. Holy shit! Within four days of the matching offer being mentioned. Wow! Four days. Honestly, Travis and I both, at least, were thinking hundred, hundred and fifty total. God <laughs> damn. Thank you so much, people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, after the... Because uh, we were at $110, not including Travis's match, by mm -hmm. the end of the first day. The, the day of release. And at that point, I was already thinking, oh, I need to go for the interface I actually want, not the one <laughs> I think I can afford with this. Wow. So... Yeah, that's why I have the Complete Audio 6, not the uh, Behringer Euphoria 6. Not very euphoric, just saying. From what I hear, it's nice, but the mm. Complete Audio 6 is supposed to be the best interface for under $250. Wow. So, yeah, I am I am very pleased. It is clean. Um, it is. It's awesome. We already, like we already mentioned, we already had a guest in studio thanks to this. And it was especially necessary because I had forgotten why I had an Art 2BMP power supply on my Amazon wish list. <laughs> I thought it was because of noise and was related to the ground loop that I had for a while. No, no, it was actually dead. All right. So when I got everything set up Sunday, I tried to turn everything on and only one of the preamps turned on. <laughs> like, shit. I swapped power supplies and the other one turned on. I was like, oh, great. I could have fixed that for $13. <laughs> so that is ordered. It is on its way. Um, <clears throat> but I, what I did instead was I ran the audio directly into the uh, Complete Audio 6, used the preamp on it, and it did fine. And I mm. ran some software effects to make up for not being able to go through the Autocom Pro. Uh, but it will be very nice to be able to, next time, run that through all of the, the hardware I have sitting here. Very nicely and prettily flashing lights in front of me under my monitor. 
because fl- hey come on electronics flashing lights badass yes oh yeah showing right. me my gain <laughs> reduction on the compressor yeah <laughs> <coughs> all right <laughs> All right, you're getting a little excited now. Right, yes, we also uh, got some donations from Alf. Holy shit, yes. Thank you, Alf. Yes. Peter. Peter, thank you. And pictures and beer. Again from Randy. Holy shit. He uh, cleaned out his car oh, and right. found more change and sent it to us. <laughs> <laughs> thank it, you? it turns out if you want to send us money or beer, um, we will give you addresses to mail stuff. Oh, yeah. Hey, I, yeah, yeah. I've got a lovely address here. You can send stuff to me anytime you like. And we also got a new patron, <laughs> Rachel. Rachel, holy shit. Hey, thank you. So, hooray, you guys rock. Oh, hurrah. <clears throat> and don't All right, forget so I want to give a, oh, go I'm going right. to give a quick run through here. <clears throat> so, thank you to Travis, Frank, Daryl, Virginia, Paul, BT, Motley, George, Hugh, Man, Robert, Ray, Alex, Mark, Flying, the Flying Skeptic, Renee Davis, uh, Mike, Latanya, Duncan, Jaded, Zappa, Will, and Henry, Alan. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, Mark, Peter, Heather, Sean, and Al from South Carolina. Did you skip Russ? Did I? I don't think I so. I think you skipped your man, Russ. Really? Yeah. R- Russ from Kitsap? I don't think yeah. so. Yeah, you went straight to Travis. <gasps> well, Russ, I still owe you a beer. <laughs> you still have to come out. Yes, you guys all rock. Uh, we we couldn't keep doing this without you. Um, you guys are amazing. And uh, if you didn't donate for the new equipment, uh, donate to the Humanist Service Corps and Sangtaba. Sangitaba, the the group they're working with, Sangtaba, yes, the group they're working with to uh, try to help secure basic rights for women and girls accused of witchcraft, like healthcare, which is so, important. Yes, definitely. And you know, if you're one of our thousands of listeners and not one of the oh about twenty that I just mentioned, you know, hey, appreciate it if you kick us a buck a week, just. Just a thought. Just a thought. But we love you guys. So use the Amazon click through on the side of our page and you know that would be appreciated too. But anyways, have a lovely week. Yes. And uh we'll be back next week with the interview we recorded a few days ago. <laughs> we get a week off. Hooray. Holy shit, do we? We yeah. do. Wow. Well, at weird. least you do. I don't think I'll be able to edit it until next week, but yeah. I'm going to ride my motorcycle. Thank you for listening to another episode of Atheist Nomads. You can find show notes and contact information at atheistnomads.com. Follow us on Twitter at Atheist Nomads and like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Atheist Nomads. Please subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, or your podcatcher of choice. And while you're there, feel free to leave us a review. The music is courtesy of Sturdy Fred. Until next time, this has been The Atheist Nomads.